so much cover crops and cats. Hello. So as you know, this isn't how I normally do videos, but I recently had a little bit of a freak accident and it's been a little limited as to my computer use. So I've decided to give this a try because there's a lot that I want to share, a lot of questions I want to answer. And the first question that I'm going to answer today is I got a subscriber comment asking, what kind of cover crops do you plant and what do you do with them? Do you get rid of them? Do you kill them? And that's actually a great question because if you've seen the progression of videos and the timeline of how Goldie Farms has evolved and how the different levels of succession and what it's gone through to get to this stage, you've probably seen that there's times when it's super lush like this with different cover crops every season. And then there's times where it's not that lush and it's mostly the wood chips like this path that I'm sitting on here. To answer your question, right now the cover crops that we have in bloom and all around me are arugula, cilantro, calendula, fava beans, sweet peas, poppies that are just now starting to bloom. Oh, we've got sunflowers. And that is how we started with sunflowers, vetch, clover, and ryegrass. Those are the cover crops that we first began with because we could buy them at the farm supply store in big bags. And it was actually Hilberta's idea to buy a 25 pound sack of black oil sunflower seeds. And these were just sold as bird feed, so they're very inexpensive. And we were able to cover the entire food forest area with a thick layer of these, of these sunflower seeds. And then the birds started eating them all. So then we covered them in a thick layer of straw, which is really important to protect that soil and keep the moisture in and the sun from beating down and baking the soil. And so that first year was the year of the sunflowers, vetch, clover, and then later we started introducing more grasses. Um, then a cilantro start that I planted became millions of cilantro plants everywhere. And so they're great for juicing. And um, I'm, I don't, I'm not a nutritionist or no nutrition science, but it has been interesting looking up about how they've been used to help people detoxify from heavy metals. And then arugula, there's arugula everywhere. And unfortunately, we, it's really, really spicy and I don't really like it. But what's cool about scattering cover crops is you can learn where things like to, where they thrive. So example, right here, it's all beans. So we know beans do pretty well here. And these are fava beans, which are not the best beans. But if we want to introduce a different species, like um, maybe a dragon tongue bean, we know that if we plant it here, we probably have fairly good success that it will like it here. And so we can use where we scattered cover crops and where they thrived to help us understand where we can best have success of growing something that we really want to grow, if that makes sense. Right now, it's really, really lush and beautiful but it's mid-April and today it was 80 degrees. It's starting to warm up and we might get one more little sprinkle of rain, but here in California where we are, uh, once it stops raining, that's it for the rest of the year. So we'll go until maybe Jan December or January without any rain. And we don't water any of this cover crop. It's just too much water and our garden is really designed to be drought tolerant and we've designed it you've probably seen the videos of the water battery and all the different things that we've done to really conserve water because we're on city water and water is very expensive here and it's a very precious resource these you know we take as much advantage of them as we can picking all the you know the calendula over here to my left drying it for the goldie glow and for teas we're making juices we're doing stir fries all kinds of things while we can and then this lushness will be gone. And so what we'll do is basically either chop and drop or smoosh down or chop, drop and cover are the different techniques that we use. All these are starting to go to seed. And so they'll reseed year after year and those seeds become hardier and hardier after year, year after year. And they've kind of um, acclimated to this exact zone, which is really cool and a great reason that if you're looking for seeds, getting them from your local library if they do exceed exchange or from friends and neighbors that live in your climate zone. Um, 
um, can really help you know your garden thrive faster but we will smush all this down and ideally just leave it i've kind of struggled with that because it looks so messy and wild in years past i would then put wood chips on top of it so that chop drop and cover the advantage of that is that you're locking in all that good nutrients all the life that is in here you're locking that down covering it from the sun and it'll break down almost as if you created a little compost pile right in your garden beds um, but the downside of that is sometimes the little seeds have a harder time bursting through all that mulch so chopping and dropping is also a great way to create a really good environment to protect the soil but still allow those seeds to come up year after year after year some of the benefits of cover crop are it's beautiful uh, you feel like you're in a jungle your cats feel like they're in a jungle there's food everywhere and this we don't have to do really anything now it's just out here but the main reason we have cover crop is to improve the soil because cover crop protects the soil from the sun and that's really important because when the sun hits the soil it bakes it and over time all that life inside of it can die and then the soil becomes compacted and then it becomes um, hydrophobic so when it rains or when you water it it just kind of beads off so it kind of creates the spiral of problems because in nature she likes to always keep her soil covered it's almost as though the bare soil is like removing her skin and having a, a wound and so she uses certain pioneer species that people commonly call weeds things like star thistle which was really bad here when we first started in this garden there was tons of star thistle which is awful awful spiky weed and so we've replaced that with things that we want that are soft and beautiful and edible another thing that's great about cover crops is a lot of them are nitrogen fixing so they fix nitrogen in their roots and also because you have roots in your soil you're creating a connection between the earth and the sky so the plant is pulling energy from the sun down into the soil giving energy to the microbial life that's down there and so that's a way that you can improve your soil from the bottom up and then you're also improving the soil from the top down by chopping and dropping the cover crop and allowing it to add to the fertility and become soil <sighs> i hope that's helpful that was, good. was that good would you like to know anything else about cover crops if you'd like to know anything else about cover crops please let me know in the comments and um, i will try to do another video like this again soon